Hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns of Creatures series of comedy, fantasy, no novels, and short stories. With me is Sam West, and today we're talking about the spell Cause Fear. You scared me. Sorry. Yes. Uh, Cause Fear is Xanathar's Guide to Everything. First level necromancy, action to cast, 60 foot cast range, verbal commodants, concentration up to a minute. Bummer concentration, but it is really cheap. You awaken the sense of mortality in one creature you can see within range, which might be the most poetic way for such a simple effect to be worded. Yeah. That's in done like sure, like the existential dread, I guess, is what this spell is doing. A construct or undead is immune to the effect. The target makes a whiz save or is frightened until the spell ends. The frightened target can repeat the save at the end of each of its turns, ending on a success. And when you upcast it, normally I exclude upcasting whenever I'm talking about these because I never think they're worth doing. But this one. This one lets you target additional creatures for each spell level above first. So if you use second, you get two. If you get a third, you get three. Fourth, four, four, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all the way up. But if you use a third, just use fear. That's an option. Uh, that is almost always better. This is sculpted. So if you only want to hit three creatures, so you don't want to do the big cone. That's a reason. Yeah. This is also flexibly also just an additional first level spell. So the, the neat reason to upcast this is putting this on your sheet kind of like having nine levels worth of different spells that target just like first level targets one thing a second level of a spell is cause two fear and it's not cause fear anymore because it's targeting two things so kind of is like getting more bang for your buck because you can always download downcast only costs you one slot to prepare upcasting it's great i think regardless warlock wizard spell for just the first level version you're just casting with the first level spell you're seeing your concentration you've got 60 foot range you're making something afraid what is that worth to you right. well, well what is what does that entail the frightened condition that's uh oh, right. it can't attack or no it can't move toward me or something that's right? correct and what i else? frightened two bullet points a frightened okay. creature has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls while the source of its fear is within line of sight attack rolls to anybody anybody if it, okay. if it can see you it has disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls full stop Okay. Additionally, because you have the source of the fear. Additionally, the creature can't willingly move closer to the source of the fear, which again is you in this particular instance. So yeah. if you got a cause fear on somebody, they can't move closer and they have disadvantage on their attack rolls and ability checks while they can see you. That doesn't mean they can move out of sight of you and that penalty goes away. So there'll be a couple of niche battle maps where like someone will duck behind cover and attack the barbarian and it'll be fine. But for the most part, this is a way to debilitate one enemy pretty efficiently for a first level spell, I think. Um, yeah, that sounds pretty good, except the only problem is I, I like fear so much, and I keep going back to comparing the two. Like, Why can't you be more like your brother? I want them to drop their stuff and run away from me. <laughs> I, I that stuff. Anything that causes fear for the rest of the time, Mob's going to be like, it doesn't disarm <laughs> them. It doesn't yeah. make them drop their things like fear does. Back in yeah. my day, fear made them drop their things. I don't care necessarily about disarming them. I just want their stuff <laughs> you want to pick you want to pickpocket them yes that's what i'm hearing you want to use cause fear as a a mass theft tool not an actual debilitating condition apply apple <laughs> yes. Apl half a little, little, a plier you understand what i'm saying my only real issue with cause fear is that hideous laughter exists and hideous laughter knocks them prone and incapacitates them it doesn't work on everything though so this uh, cause fear works on anything that is not dead or construct Hideous Laughter works only if their int is five or higher. So there's a very narrow mm. window where Cause Fear will work on like some beasts, some aberrations, some elementals, some really dumb monsters that aren't undead or constructs where uh, Hideous Laughter wouldn't work on them. So you have like a, a small little trade off there. The problem is like dropping something prone and incapacitating is way better than making it afraid of you. And that's kind of, and the difference of 30 foot range versus 60 is also like somewhat meritable for Cause Fear. Cause Fear's got a longer range than Hideous Laughter does. It's still like a, I don't know if I really want this if I've got Hideous Laughter right there. That being said, you can't upcast Hideous Laughter either. So there are like some meaningful upsides. I think on the right character, Cause Fear definitely feels more thematically appropriate. Although I do say, I think Hideous Laughter is one of the most fun bard spells in the game because mm. it's just, you know. You make you tell a joke so funny that it incapacitates them. That's pretty great. It should be a bard exclusive for that reason, but it's on wizards as well because, of course, it's on wizards. Why wouldn't wizards get access to everything bards have? That would be fun for them. Um, <laughs> listen, tangent aside, are you putting cost on characters? Probably, but I'm, Probably. I'm not, not, not excited about it. Really? Um, yeah, because it's not fear, <laughs> but um. I'm, I don't what know. If you're, after what if you're after under I used it level? a few times, what? 
Yeah, but so like up till you get here at fifth level, does this fill that void in your heart up until then? Well, no, because it doesn't do the one thing I want my fear spell to do. But <laughs> okay, no, fair. it is pretty cool though. I mean, it is. It's a concentration spell that keeps at least one creature, you know, coming at me to break the concentration, unless it's got a ranged option. But still, disadvantage, disadvantage. on that. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's neat. Um, there are times it would definitely be beneficial. I will say, I think for characters that don't have really deep, like, if your concentration is something you're actively worried about, the spell I think is quite good in the upper tiers because you'll both you'll spend first and second level slots pretty freely to imply this condition, and it's a pretty fine condition to do cheaply. Like a, a second level cause here being like those two things are afraid and can't advance anymore is a big game, especially because it gives them disadvantage on their ranged attack rolls. So it's kind of like the ability to do two things at once on a really cheap cost. Mm -hmm. I think honestly, second level cast of cause fear is one of the better second level spells in the game. Like if this were just second level spell and said but two creatures have it, I'm very interested in that because it's debilitating two things at once. The moment you hit third level again, like you've suggested, fear exists and fear hits a lot of things and it makes them drop their stuff. I think there's a pretty good window where this is like I put this on the same sheet as a character that has fear. I think mm. that there will be some characters that are dedicated to the frightening thing and want that to be their whole shtick. And while not improving how they take damage isn't amazing, right? Like this isn't offering your allies advantage on attack rolls like knocking things prone is. This isn't giving people the ability to crit them like ink like uh, paralyzing does with whole person and stuff. Cause your hit its multiple things. It prevents advancement. For what it does, it does it in a really cheap, really efficient package. And that makes me like it a lot. I find myself pretty regularly whenever I'm making characters, whether that be pre-gens or characters I intend to actually play, I find cause is a really easy car or easy ability just to say, I want a condition enabler, I want a saber die. Cause is really cheap, it's really flexible. It's a really easy one to just jam on there and not have to worry about it ever again. What all right, uh what about saving throws? Uh wisdom. Yep. Is that how are how are beasts with regard to wisdom? Or are you, who are you casting this on reliably? Most anything with I I we've had this conversation and I saw there was a comment about it. And I understand this oh. why this question is being brought up right now. <sighs> to whenever you're in character building, my argument is not that saving throws aren't superior statistically than one or the other. I'm saying that there's a wide enough variety of monsters that you shouldn't really care about when you're building your character what the saving throw types are. For the Not most when part. you're building your character. I'm talking more about, like, I've got I've got this on my character sheet. Sure. But I want to be selective about how I use it. Maybe if, uh, if a bunch of clerics are attacking me, then uh, <laughs> sure. I'm probably going to choose a different option than this. I think that's about the full extent of it. I think there will be some very clear things that have really high wisdoms. I think if your wisdom is like a, a 10 or like a 6 through 8, 14, which is the bulk of creatures, that's probably a fine chance to hit with cause fear. Once you're looking at things that are getting like plus 6s and 7s, and more specifically, once you're dealing with things that are adding proficiency bonus to wisdom saves, which are normally like class level monsters or things with high CR and legendary actions, that's where you start to go, okay, it's a bad idea to put the cause fear on the thing with the plus 12 to whiz save. And you'll know very specifically when that's happening. Again, it's against the evil demon cleric that's, you know, worshiping Asmodeus and has got a bunch of evil demon summoning magic around them. You'll be like, okay, that thing's probably pretty wise. Cosmere might not be the best option against that target. But if you're like seeing some average bandits, you're seeing some average goblins, you're in the low tiers dealing with the monsters of the low tiers. Mm -hmm. Very regularly, Cosmere is going to be at somewhere between a four and 12 wisdom this will be fine there and that's i think the bulk of when cause fear is going to be cast you'll obviously want to do it on things with lower wisdom scores you're not often going to know what those wisdom scores are because if we're going to be entirely honest i don't think there's a great level of consistency in monster design as far as what quantifies a decent wisdom score i think it's kind of because wisdom is a little bit of a messy stat with how int and charisma work and how yeah. it all of the mental ability scores in D&D feel to me like there's a little bit too much overlap, and I really think that, like, maybe Int and Wiz could have been one ability score, and that would have been fine, but there's a lot of reasons why they can't be, because there are some differences. Regardless to the point of wisdom, I don't think that you're going to find it... Don't cast this on clerics like you suggested. And I think if you take that approach, you're probably going to be fine casting on most anyone else because there are going to be times where you're like, we need this thing to die, fail a saving throw. This is the best option I have at my disposal. That is what I'm going to do, even if it is 10% less likely to hit than con save would be because I don't have a con save on my sheet right now because I'm level three. And that's where I think the reality of cost fear is going to be. All right. Well, you got a rating for this one? 
I think this is a perfect three out of five. I don't have any problems casting. I don't think it's like cracked, broken in half. I think there are better save or dies than this, but this is really flexible. The upcasting is something I actually consider doing regularly. I put this on a lot of sheets because it's a really easy saber die that locks something down from approaching for a couple rounds. That's pretty good. Frightened effects for reducing uh, attacks is also great. It's hitting multiple targets. Excellent. Concentration's a big order, though, or about the tall order for especially the upper tiers. So, like, it gets worse as the game goes on, kind of, if you're maintaining concentration on things. I don't know. It's not amazing. It's very playable. I think it's great. All right. Uh, one, one last question. Um, available for Warlock and Wizard. Are you putting this on your Warlock? No. You're, that's not true. I'm putting it on my Warlock up until 4th level. Well, the moment I get 3rd level spells, this comes off. But up until that point, I am happy casting with Pack Magic slots. It's just I'm not happy casting with a 4th level Pack Magic slot ever. I'm not ever happy with even 3rd level Pack Magic in this. 1 and 2, I'm probably fine with. So I probably put it on there up until 3rd or 5th level. Somewhere in that range. Alright, well, uh, I guess I'm going to give it a rating. I will just defer to your 3. Sounds good enough to me. Um, yes, no, not that I'm crazy excited about, but I don't hate it either. Um, yeah, middle of the road. All right. Well, that was Cause Fear. Let us know what you think in the comments. Thank you, Sam, and thank you, everyone, for joining us. We will see you next time. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching. If you found this helpful, informative, or entertaining, I'd really appreciate it if you hit the like button below. You needn't smash it. A gentle tap will suffice. If you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel. And make sure you check out the links in the description where you'll find my Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels, Sam's full review of the spell, and other fun things.